But they had like Cat Power and the that's the chick. Was it sick? I, I, I feel Cat Power is more than Chocolate. Like, oh, she's oh, been oh. everything. Yeah. She's like been like blues. She's, yeah, she's like been working in Chocolate. I guess right now she's in Deep Pop with her new song. She's not feeling it. Um, yeah, either. They're not going to be here the whole rehearsal, just two or three songs. Yeah. Sorry, guys. and then into reality. Can you tell me about this story? It was about like the um, the snare drum sound actually, um, that reverb snare drum sound and doing a really dramatic like ode to like like Love Unrequited or something like that. It just seems like that drum sound has a lot to do with, you know, balladry and like pain and suffering or something in a in a, in a, in a funny way, in a humorous way, not in a really sad way, because it's so referential to a certain kind of snare drum sound. Um, so just working with that, those drums initially was like the genesis for the song. Genesis. Are you thinking of like Phil Collins? <laughs> no, but I like Phil Collins. I mean, a lot of the music that I listen to from the 80s is like, um, really obscure, uh, like record, like dollar bin records. Um, so they're not, it, a lot of my music isn't really referencing anything that's like super popular. Um, so it's actually referencing stuff that is referencing stuff that is popular from a different time. Sort of like how like, uh, like Sublime Frequencies puts out those compilations of like, you know, rock bands from Thailand or whatever. And it sounds like a distant reflection of like American radio somewhere. Um, those are the kind of records I listen to from, from the 80s. So everything that I'm like, those kinds of snare drum sounds, I'm actually not thinking of the Phil Collins sound. I'm just kind of thinking of like somebody else who's like bastardizing the Phil Collins sound. I'm carrying the torch of a certain style of music and like recording of music, which is to respect a line that has been, or a path that has been chosen 
and not like saying that that path is closed. We somehow think that like being referential to history is just pure nostalgia, but I don't really think that like those historical paths have been fully realized. So I'm just, I, I just feel like I'm sort of like trying to help it along into the future. Um, I'm not looking backwards. I'm just like sort of looking all around me at, at once. I'm making my own music that references my own personal reaction to the cultural landscape and the political landscape. Can you tell me about uh, your cultural, the cultural and political landscape that you're talking about? Um, well, I am, I am living in America. I am, you know, I'm biracial. I'm a woman. I'm from kind of like meager upbringing. Um, I went to Ivy League school. Uh, I'm kind of a f like an asshole and like kind of not very super feminine. So it's just like those things, you know. Um, and I live in a in a country that is pretty in the shit, you know, in every way possible. With a lot of my friends who are musicians, I feel like they're attracted to the sounds of music in, from their childhood. That happens a lot. Well, I started taking a mixture of jazz and classical piano when I was like six. And uh, I studied with um, this woman who was not like sort of like those slave driver teachers that you would like, they would be stereotyped or something. She was very mellow. And so we did a combination of like... Impro improvising jazz stuff and um, like the romantic classical period. Um, we did some Baroque stuff, but I was like really focused on like Chopin and Debussy and stuff like that. And I had no patience for like this technical, like sort of like unemotional music. So a lot of the piano that I did was focused a lot on like cluster chords and also jazz uh, progressions. You won't like see me playing huge chords that have octaves and stuff like that. There's not a lot of like Beach Boysy sort of like dum 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 dum. I, I, it's really unnatural for me to do that. So it's a lot of this, and then a lot of like bass notes that are jumping from octave or jumping from below the octave because that's what my hands naturally do. My teacher was super cool, you know. She wasn't like one of these people that if you get it wrong, you're somehow wrong. She'd be like, "Do it your way." And I, I think that's kind of like the first time you are songwriting is when your teacher says, do it your way. And so you just interpret it your way. Um, that's, what's, that's kind of what songwriting is for me. You know?